Hey Michael with X-Force PC, I want to talk to you about 4K for a couple of minutes here. Uh, you've probably seen 4K TVs uh, advertised and as you're walking through you know, an electronic store you see well, 4K TVs. So what, what does that mean exactly? Uh, the guy in Best Buy, Lord only knows what he's going to tell you. So I'm going to give you the scoop. I'm going to tell you what he probably doesn't know or won't tell you, because he doesn't know. Um, before we get into 4K, uh, we want to talk about first, what, what have we been using up until 4K? Well, 1080p, right? You've probably heard of 1080p. Almost all TVs in, in people's houses today are 1080p. If you went out and bought a standard kind of $200 monitor today, or even a $180, $150 monitor, it's going to be 1080p most likely. And it could be a 22-inch monitor or a 27-inch monitor. And the same goes for TVs. 1080p um, is kind of, has kind of been the standard. So this represents two 50-inch TVs, these rectangles. This one's 1080p, this one is 4K. So on a 1080p display, what that means is you have 1,080 horizontal lines. Or in other words, the, the vertical number of pixels is 1,080. So I'm going to write 1080 over here. That's how many vertical uh, pixels we have. And we also have horizontal pixels, and we have more of those because it's a kind of a widescreen. It's 16 by 9 resolution. So that's 1920. That number you don't hear quite as much because it's kind of assumed that if you have 1,080 vertical pixels, you must have 1,920 horizontally, and that is the case. And so to figure out the number of pixels we have here, we just multiply the two numbers, like we're finding the area of a rectangle, and we come up with roughly 2 million pixels. Okay? So 1080p TV, 2 million pixels. 1920 pixels wide, 1080 uh, vertically. Now we move over to 4K. 4K doubles these two numbers, so we have 38 40 pixels wide and 2160 vertically. Now if they call this 1080p, I don't know why they don't call this 2160p. They call it 4K. Um, so I hadn't even done the research into why they call it that. I'm just giving you the specs. So 3840 pixels wide, 2160 pixels tall, it's a lot of pixels. Do the math and you come up with 8 million roughly pixels. So it is four times harder. If I'm a computer guy, what I'm thinking about is if I'm gaming on this monitor versus this one or this TV versus this one, it's four times harder to, to do it at 4K because there's four times the number of pixels to draw. So you need, in theory, four times the computing power. Or, let's say you're getting 100 frames per second over here gaming, you're probably going to get 25 over here in round numbers. Now, there'll be some other variances involved, but in round numbers, that'll be what you're looking at. So, we have a 4K gamer, a computer we've, we've specified for 4K gaming. And what we've done in that system is we put the fastest video card and the fastest processor you can get. There's not much else we can do. Fastest video card, fastest processor, and those are the two things that affect your ability to game. And I can tell you that uh, for the most part you can, you can game uh, at 4K with all the settings turned up. You may face, find a couple of exceptions where you maybe have to back them down, just the settings down just a little bit. Um, but for the most part you can max everything out on the games. Um, as far as broadcast television goes, just to throw in a couple of notes on that, in case you didn't know, almost all broadcast TV is 720p or 1080i for interlaced, um, which is actually below this 1080p that you probably have in your house. So you're not, even, you're not even getting what you have right now from your cable company or from DirecTV or whoever, Dish. So if you go out and buy a 4K TV, it's not going to do you a whole lot of good. The only 4K being broadcast right now is a little bit from Netflix and so forth. You'll start, start to see more of it trickle out, but I think it's going to be pretty slow to come, to come around uh, because 
it's a lot more bandwidth. So UVerse and Time Warner Cable have to push, or Verizon or whoever Comcast has to push a lot more data, four times the amount of data through their system to do 4K. So it's going to be a little while probably before you can get regular broadcast TV on a 4K TV. But uh, due to the pricing, how it is today, it still probably makes sense to get the 4K TV because they're not that much more expensive than 1080p. So, um, you know, why buy something that's kind of yesterday? So, if you're buying TV, you probably want to buy uh, 4K. Just know that the stuff coming into your house isn't going to come into your house at 4K. So, it'll just be running at 1080p. Now, we have had customers ask us, they say, well, we want to run three 4K TVs and game across those three 4K TVs. Well, we saw the math earlier. That's the equivalent of 12 1080p, if I can write, 1080p uh, monitors or TVs. Three 4K TVs is equivalent of 12 1080p displays or TVs. And so that's why it's simply not possible. The technology hasn't gotten there yet. So if you're going to game at 4K, you're going to do it on one monitor right now, and probably for a while. Um, I personally, for most gaming, prefer one monitor. Now, a couple of areas where three is actually kind of better is flight simulation and racing, like driving racing cars, you know. Um, otherwise, I prefer actually a single ten, uh, high quality display over three separate displays. So hopefully that helps you understand 4K a little bit, helps you understand why it requires such a fast machine, and helps you understand why you cannot game on three 4K displays on a single machine. Um, you can hook three 4K TVs to our 4K gamer, but you'll have to run them at 1080p, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you got any questions, Send me an email. It's michael at xforcepc.com. Again, that is michael at xforcepc.com.